Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall. The Gradient Tool is one of Adobe Illustrator's most powerful and fundamental tools. There's lots you can do with gradients in Illustrator, including a few things you never even considered. In this fundamental video, we'll cover the ins and outs of this tool and give you a comprehensive understanding of it. In the process, we'll build something pretty cool. Let's go. The first thing we'll do is we'll create a new document. Our new document will have a width of 1,000 points, a height of 1,000 points. We'll have a single artboard, and we'll have the RGB color mode. All right, before we get started, I want to remind you that we are using the Essentials layout. To see the Essentials layout or to access it, select Essentials from the top right drop down. I also want to remind you that we are using Smart Guides. To set up Smart Guides, Select View, select Smart Guides, or Control U. Lastly, I want to remind you that we will use the bottom of the page to offer tips and tricks and key command recommendations. Let's get started. First thing we'll do is we'll select our rectangle tool. We'll start at the top left, click and drag all the way down to the bottom right. Once done, we'll set our fill to black and our stroke to transparent. We'll do this by selecting our stroke and then clicking on none directly beneath our color picker. Once done with that, with our shape still selected, we'll select object, lock selection. That will lock the selection and give us a black background. Next thing we'll do, with our rectangle still selected, we'll click and release anywhere on the screen. And let's create a rectangle 200 points wide by 200 points tall. Let's click OK. Once done with that, let's create a white background and black stroke. We'll do this by selecting the default fill and stroke directly beneath the color picker. Once done with that, we'll align our shape horizontally and vertically towards center. If you don't have your alignment elements in your top toolbar, all you need to do is go to Window, Align, or select Shift F7, then select the elements. Now that we're all set, let's get started with our exploration of the gradient tool. We'll do this first by selecting our gradient tool with our rectangle still selected. Note that on the bottom right, you should have the gradient tool already open. If you do not, you can always double click on your gradient tool and your gradient window will open. If you don't see it still, you can always select Window, Gradient, or Control F9 to make the window visible. Once our gradient tool is selected and our window is visible, we are going to click on our color picker and we're going to select our fill. We're going to click on it once to make sure it is at the front. That means it is selected. Next thing we'll do is we'll click on our gradient. Note straight away that our default gradient is visible within our shape. Now, if we want to select other active or saved gradients, you can always click on the drop down next to the gradient tool and select any of the visible gradients. For this case, let's select gold dust. And you'll notice straight away that our gradient appears in that. Let's undo that by selecting Control Z to go back to the white to black gradient. There are primarily two types of gradient. What we have here is a linear gradient. You'll notice that it fades from one side to the other. The next gradient is called a radial gradient. You can select the gradient type next to linear. This is our radial gradient right here. And you'll notice the fade emanates from the center and extends to the outside of the element. Let's go back to our linear gradient and let's customize our gradient. Let's get started by customizing the colors within the gradient. The first thing we'll do is we'll select our white gradient from the gradient slider. We'll do this by double clicking on it. And note that we have three options. First is you can select a custom color. And what we can do here is change our color model from grayscale to RGB. Click here. Next thing we can do is we can always customize our color in two different ways. We can always select it from our color numbers right here. We can also use our color codes if we want to do that. And of course, we can use our RGB spectrum to select any color we want here. We can also select color from our color swatches. In this case, we'll click on swatches and we'll click on the default red. Now that we've selected our red, we can click anywhere on screen to hide the swatch. 
Now we can also move our color the way we do this is we can click on our color from the slider and we can drag it anywhere. Notice how our location is shifting. To add another color, all we need to do is click anywhere along our slider and a new color will appear. In this case, let's make our middle color white. We'll do this again by double clicking, making sure our swatches are selected and clicking on white. Again, we'll deselect our swatch by clicking anywhere on screen. And let's make our last color in the gradient slider blue. The way we do this again is we double click on our color and we select blue from our color swatches. Click anywhere on screen to deselect our swatches. Once we've got our colors, notice we can click and drag our colors anywhere along our shape. In this case, let's select our first color and let's change the location to 33%. We do this by selecting our color. Once again, we can do this on the shape or within the gradient window and then changing our location to 33%. Next, let's select our blue color and change that location to 67%. We can also change the color balance of our slide by clicking and dragging on any of these edges right here, and that will change the balance of our color transitions. Now, what if we want a sharp edge? To get a sharp edge, all we need to do is select our middle color and again, change the location of that color to match the location of our first color. In this case, we'll select that and change the location to 33%. Note straight away that we've got a sharp line. If we want to add another color, in this case, what I want to do is I want to add another sharp line to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in our second color a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to click on the outside of that color. Once done with that, I'll change that location to 67%. I want to make sure that our color splits are uniform in our document. Next thing I want to do is I'll double click our middle color and select white from the color swatch. Once done, I'll click anywhere on screen to deselect. Again, I'll make sure that our middle color is selected. I'm going to change that location to 67%. Note straight away, we've got that hard red, white, and blue. Now, what if I want to save this gradient right here? All I need to do is select the drop down next to our gradient and select Add to Swatches. We'll click on that, and notice within our color swatch, our gradient has been saved. To rename our gradient, all we need to do is double click on our gradient, and let's rename it French Flag. Note now when we select our gradient from the swatches in the drop down window, it will be known as French flag. Here's a cool thing about our gradients is we can change the angle of our gradients as well. We do this by with our gradient tool still selected, we can click and drag across our gradient in any way we see fit. Notice we can compress the gradient as small as we want, or of course we can stretch it as big as we want. Let's undo. Another thing we can do, if we know our gradient is going to be of a right angle or at a 45 degree angle, all we need to do is click, drag, and hold our shift key. That will limit our angles in 45 degree increments. To deselect, all we need to do is we can grab our selection tool, click anywhere on screen, or if our gradient tool is still selected, we can hold our control key and click anywhere off of our shape. Let's undo by hitting control Z and bringing our shape back to where it was. Now, another cool thing about the gradient tool is we can also add it to a stroke. With our shape still selected, let's change our stroke width to 10 points. We select our stroke in the color picker. And then let's select our default stroke, white to black. Now let's deselect again, pressing our control key and clicking anywhere off our shape. And note, we've applied our gradient to our stroke as well. Let's go ahead and drag this shape down. We do this by selecting our control key, 
clicking and dragging down. If we want a perfectly vertical drag, let's hold our shift key down as well. And let's release at the bottom of the page like that. Now let's talk about a complex shape. In this complex shape, we are going to use type. So let's select our type tool. And let's click anywhere along our artboard and let's write the word fade, F-A-D-E. Once we've written it, let's select all of our type and let's change our fill to white and our stroke to transparent. Once we're done with that, let's change our character to Bebas, B-E-B-A-S, and let's change our type size to 200 points. Please note, if you don't have Bebas, feel free to go to fontsquirrel.com and you can download it for free there. Once we've created our type, let's grab our selection tool, make sure our object is still selected, and let's align it horizontally and vertically to center. Now that we've created the French flag gradient, let's apply it to our type. We do that by first going over the color picker and making sure that our solid is selected. Next thing we'll do is we'll click on our gradient, and select French flag. Note that what happens there is our type went black with our gradient selected. The reason is, is you cannot apply a gradient to type. So let's undo that, control Z. And in order to add a gradient to a type, what we need to do is change our type. The way we can do this is with our type still selected, we can right click on our type and select create outlines. Now that we've done that, our type is no longer editable. Instead, it is a series of shapes. Now, if we want to add our French flag, all we need to do is go into our gradient tool and select French flag. Note straight away that the gradient is applied to our complex shape. However, it's added to the individual elements, not to the shape as a whole. The way we change that is with our group still selected, all we need to do is select our gradient tool and then we'll start from the bottom or any direction that you want. You want to click and drag vertically in this case. To get a perfectly vertical drag, hold your shift key down. And once you're happy, release. Once done to deselect your shape, again, select your control key, click anywhere off the shape, and there you go. Now, what if we wanted to change the angle of the shape? Now, this is where it gets tricky with complex shapes. Let's go ahead and select our shape once again. The way we do this is we can press our control key, click on our shape, or of course we can grab our selection tool and click on our shape. If I change the angle of our gradient right now, it's at 90 degrees, let's change it to 45 degrees. Watch what happens. Our gradient again reverts back to the individual shapes. Since we don't wanna do this, how do we do this with our shape as a whole? Let's undo. And this time, what we'll do is with our gradient tool still selected, we're going to click and drag. If we know we want it at a 45 degree angle, all we need to do is hold our shift key and drag along until we're happy. If we want to make our gradient smaller, we'll start from inside the F towards the E. We're going to hold our shift key down to ensure that it's at a 45 degree angle. And then we're going to drag until our gradient fills our shape the way we want. That looks pretty good right there. We're going to release. And again, let's deselect our shape. We're going to deselect our shape by holding our control key and clicking off our shape. That's a pretty good start. What if we want to add to this complex shape? With that in mind, let's go ahead and select our rectangle tool. Then we're going to start below the F, click and drag all the way beneath the end of the E. That looks pretty good right there. Now notice our gradient appears within our new shape because that was the last color of our last selected shape. Now if we want to have our gradient as part of the above shape, you need to group it in. Note that right now it is not grouped in. We can always select all of the shapes. This time around we'll grab our selection tool. We'll click and drag across both shape groups. We'll grab our gradient tool and then we can drag across both shapes, see what happens. Again, we'll start at the bottom, hold our shift key, and we'll drag across. Note that because our two shapes are not grouped together, they will only act independently. They will not add as a single entity. The way we group our shape is we'll grab our selection tool, again, drag across both shapes, and we group them by selecting object, group, 
or control G. Now that we've done that, let's go back to our gradient tool and let's click from the bottom left to the top right while holding our shift key at a 45 degree angle. Once we're happy with our gradient, we'll release and then let's hit our control key and click off our shape. Notice straight away that our gradient applies to all of the shapes that are grouped together. Now what happens if we transform or distort a shape with a gradient in it? To illustrate that, we'll select our shape. Again, we'll grab our selection tool. We'll drag across our element. Then we'll grab our free transform tool and we'll hover over the right end until our transform icon appears. Next thing we'll do is we'll click and drag vertically to make sure that our shape maintains the proper horizontal proportions. We're going to hold our shift key and drag vertically, just like that. Once we're done, we release. Let's hold our control key and deselect our shape. Note what happened to our gradient is our gradient transformed along with our shape. Now with that in mind, you've learned the fundamentals of the gradient tool and we are done. So there you have it. As you can see, you can use the gradient tool for much more than just creating a simple color fade. As usual, I encourage you to dive in and play with this tool as much as possible and see what you can get out of it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Beyond that, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. See you next time. See you.